Hey everybody, it's Marcus. Thanks for coming back for a special edition of our Tesla solar panels and power walls videos here. Uh, this one is going to be specifically on power outages. Now we've had our system installed for about a year and a half now, but with the atmospheric rivers that are moving through the area in Northern California uh, right now, this is the first opportunity we've had with an extended outage, unfortunately. Um, now in the past we've had outages, most of them are just seconds, little blips, occasionally some for a few minutes, one for an hour. This specific one was 17 hours long. And as this was our first opportunity with an extended outage, kind of got a firsthand look at some of the settings that I'd never really used before. I also had a failure of the system here. We were just completely without power that I had to do a reset, some other things to get the system working. So hopefully you'll enjoy some of my insights here and uh, hopefully they help. As always, if you like the content here, please subscribe, like the video, and if you need to, use my referral code down below to sign up for a system. Now let's get into the details on this power outage. Now I had somewhat anticipated this happening with the atmospheric rivers coming through, so I had actually changed our system to 100% backup before the storms came through. I did this the day before while we still had sun so that I knew that our batteries were going to be at 100% when the storm hit. Now 7.45 p.m. or so on Thursday night, uh, the power started to flicker. It originally went out for a second or so and then came back and about five minutes later it completely went out. Uh, PG&E originally called it a weather issue, obviously, but then later changed that to an equipment issue, and their estimate was a 4 p.m. the next day restoration for our power. That's about 21 hours. Um, now, I should make a, a, a note here. When you do have these power outages, a lot of the times they're going to be immediate uh, flip over from the, the grid to your power walls. You're not going to notice anything, but there are also periods where it's not quick enough or something's happening and you will lose power to the house for a second or two. So again, if you have sensitive electronics or anything, you want to put those on a battery backup if you don't want those to be interrupted because you will occasionally lose power to the house uh, for a second or two. That being said, once the system does go to the power walls, you will also occasionally notice that the grid comes back, but your system stays on the power walls. I believe the system's actually doing that just to protect your house from the grid with those fluctuations in the power coming from the grid. It just keeps you on your own island per se, just to protect all your electronics until the grid's a bit more stable. So when you're on a grid outage, your screen's going to look a little bit different in the app. You're obviously going to have the grid outage banner on the bottom, but up towards the top, one of the first things you're going to notice is that grid outage estimation. And this is a dynamic uh, countdown, essentially. It's looking at your usage, at your batteries, and your solar, and it uses that to determine an estimate of your time remaining on your batteries. This may not be accurate. If you use a lot more, use a lot less, this obviously is going to change. Also keep in mind, this is usually when there's no solar. So if solar comes back, your batteries are gonna recharge themselves. That's the beauty of the power walls is with power walls, no grid, you can still use your solar. Without power walls, no grid, you can't use your solar. That's why power walls are awesome. But anyways, when running off of those power walls, you're probably gonna notice a little bit different uh, behaviors on some of the electronics in your house. Now, I believe what Tesla does is they use a different frequency in Hertz, um, and this is used to control the panels and the batteries are full, uh, et cetera, to turn them off and control them. That way you don't overload your batteries or cause any damage. Now, the issue is, is that for us, we have some dimmable LEDs in the house. These must be more sensitive to those fluctuations because basically we had them at about 25%, which is their lowest dimmable state um, that we normally keep them on. Below that, they don't dim anymore. When we switch to the power walls, as you can see here, they were flickering on and off. They were shutting on and off. We also noticed in our hallway, some of the other LED bulbs, you turn them on and it would take about a half second or so for them to turn on. That's a kind of weird, I don't know, I'm not sure what the exact explanation is there. I'm sure somebody a lot smarter than I knows, uh, but just something we noticed. I've also read online that you may see some appliances that have clocks on them report times wrong, that the clock will actually run fast because of the different frequency.
I tried to take some screenshots or videos of the app as the uh, night went along here. As you can see here, uh, obviously you saw the one before, where is it 100% here? About four hours later, we're looking at about 90%. So we're a little bit ahead of that estimate um, just because our heat keeps on kicking on and so that actually uses a little bit more electricity. Um, now, we didn't really have any issues overnight. The power walls kept us completely you know, off the grid and powered all night. They got down to about 73% in the morning. And um, as you can see here, once the solar starts coming back, they'll just start to, the solar will supplement the batteries until the solar is more than what the house load is and then it'll start charging the batteries again. However, this is kind of where the fun part starts. It was about 7.45 in the morning and uh, I was laying in bed and all of a sudden, all the power in the house went off. Uh, so I pulled up the app and I got a Powerwall and Active banner on the app. Now when you click in that, it gives you some instructions, but it says basically your Powerwall shut off due to low energy. I knew this wasn't true. They were at 76% when they shut off. So something else was wrong. There's notes there to reduce your usage. Um, you may have to toggle power buttons on the power walls or restart the power walls. Um, what I did notice after this is looking at that message and popping back out. I did get another banner and it said power wall disconnected, breaker is open. Now here's kind of the weird part. I didn't notice originally when I went out to my breaker panel that we did have a tripped uh, breaker. Uh, it was an indoor circuit mostly. It had a surge protector on it and then it has two outdoor outlets. Now with it raining so hard the night before, I don't know if it was raining sideways, got into those outdoor outlets and something happened there and that's what caused the breaker to trip, but I don't believe that this is what caused the issue that ended up happening. So at this point I started to troubleshoot, uh, clicking the banner for the breaker open. It gave you instructions on, you know, here the breaker may be open, you may have to toggle the power switches. So I came out to the power walls here, took a look at them, and the green bars on the side on all three of them were solid green. That note says that they might be off. I still tried toggling them on and off, but it didn't do anything. Now, when I've connected Wi-Fi to them before, when you toggle those switches, you hear stuff turning on and off. Um, so when they didn't make any noises, nothing changed, light bar didn't change. Um, with that error, I knew something was up. So I actually went out to our panel, and that's where our gateway and the main breaker panel are. I started out looking at the main breaker panel, and I originally did miss that 15 amp circuit, but it was tripped. Uh, so I thought, okay, everything's fine. Went to the gateway and looked at the power wall breakers, and all three of those were flipped on. Everything looked good there. Didn't know what was up, so I just flipped those off and flipped those back on. The system didn't do anything, nothing changed. We still didn't have power. Uh, at that point, I went inside here and got my trusty chopstick, which is perfectly sized for hitting that reset button in your gateway. Um, basically, you're gonna open that gateway up. You'll see that little hole in there, and you just want to stick that chopstick in there and hold it. You'll see the lights change. It's only about two or three seconds you have to do it. Once you pull that out, it was about 20 or 30 seconds. I heard everything kick on, everything in the house turned back on. It showed 76% and we were good to go. I'm not really sure what happened with that. I actually have Tesla's engineering team that opened a ticket to see what is happening. So I'm interested to maybe hear what was the cause of that and why that happened. So now that we're done with the unfun stuff, some of the cool stuff. Uh, this did allow me an opportunity to see the EV charging menu for off-grid usage that I had never used before. Now what this uh, toggle essentially does is when you go off-grid, you can slide it anywhere from 5 to 95% for how much you want the power walls to allow use for grid charging. Now I typically keep mine at the minimum. I want you know the, the cars to use 5% in an off-grid situation, but this was a kind of unique situation where our car was pretty much empty, about a third full, and we had a big storm, and the next day we had a sunny day, and then today is storms again, as you might hear outside. Um, but basically we had yesterday to recover. So we were able to quickly charge our power walls back up to 90% from that 73% that they were at. And at that point, I plugged the car in because once your panels 
uh, or once your batteries are full and you're not connected to the grid, there's nowhere for that excess electricity to go. So instead of the panel shutting down, you might as well put it into something useful, the cars, do some laundry, et cetera, instead of wasting it. So I plug the car in and I lowered that toggle bar down to 90%. Now this is where it's really cool. As you can see here, it's using a charge point home here, by the way, it's not a Tesla charger. So this is all based on the system and the car. This is nothing to do with the EVSC. I was kind of wondering if I needed to get a new EVSC um, in order to utilize features like this, but this does it automatically. So as you can see here, it's looking at the solar input and it's adjusting the charging rate for the car based on that to keep it at that 90% level that that toggle bar has it set for off-grid EV charging. And so it will actually dynamically change that charge rate depending on that input. So we had some clouds and stuff rolling through. So it would go anywhere from having, you know, a max charge rate all the way up to 32 amps to cloud cover coming, going down to five amps. If something in the house picked up, it would lower the charge down. Um, what's interesting you'll see here, it does note that on the screen here that it's charging off the power wall. It also notes that once you get too much cloud cover, et cetera, it will stop charging on the car uh, and it won't deplete the battery past that 90%. When that happens, kind of interesting, it makes you unplug the car to have it start charging again. I'm not sure what the utility is in that. Maybe they just want to remind you that you are off the grid and you know explicitly you need to plug the car in so that you don't end up without any electricity. Anyways, it's really cool. This is off grid and I really, 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 really hope that they implement this on grid when you're on normal power because this is an awesome feature for keeping your excess electricity behind the meter where I can use it much more efficiently than sending it back to the grid. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions about anything with the off grid mode I can try and help with, let me know. Leave a comment. As always, like, subscribe, use that referral code if you need to. Have a good one.